twin cities did not yield. The Mongols would need a new tactic to breach the Great Song Fortress. Rather than another costly head-on assault, they planned to cut off the cities by blocking the critical supply route at Lumen Shan. The Song defector, General Lu Zheng, advised Kublai Khan that the best strategy to take Shangyang was to construct a blockade, completely cutting it off. Lu Zheng led the Mongol army to the trade route at Lumen Shan and set his plan in motion. The general's plan depended on recruiting local workers who could build defenses. The first step was to eliminate the Song garrison near the village of Lumen. The Mongol army tore through the Song garrison, and with these guardians removed, the people of Lumen gave their support to Lu Zheng and Kublai Khan. Controlling Lumen allowed Lu Zheng to employ Chinese tactics and equipment, including the construction of stone walls. He ordered the people to build walls to block the roads north, cutting off Shangyang from the rest of the Song. Shit, I'm ready to 
准备接受 K 的工作，我会确保他变得很好。The people of Lumen reported that the village of Bohiko, located to the west, would also welcome Lu Zheng's arrival. If the general could get forces to Bohiko, it would add both an economic and military boost to his blockade. Bohiko not only welcomed Lu Zheng's men, but members of the local militia even defected to the Mongol cause.
命令正在移动。秒一线，十字攻守。Stout walls now blocked off the first of the major routes to Shenyang.
错的工作，大家听好，命令即将下达。早早通知，我这就干好这座建筑。嘘，是，我已准备。Zheng's vision was complete. The Mongols' great blockade now cut off the Song cities. However, the Song commanders would not leave Shangyang to stand alone, and sent forces to break through the Mongol barrier. Song forces descended on Lu Zheng's men. The general needed to defend what he had taken from his former masters.
。大家听好，命令即将下达。会确保他变得很好。从哪去？新命令即将明君，不要少花招了。是你，是种死粉。我们正在等待指令，村民。好执行命，我这就去。技艺高超，不容安贴，我这就变好。你需要我做什么？这边。对。大家听好，我们要收到命令了。我已准备，是，我已准备，准备接受下，准备接受下的动作。技艺高超，不容当天。
执行任何任务。欢迎你们加入兄弟们！碾碎他们！无从指令。The Mongols maintained control of the Song trade route at Lumenshan, cutting off Xiangyang from the south. Thanks to the insights of General Lu Zheng, Kublai Khan's plan to weaken the Great Song fortress was working. by the loss of their supply route, the twin cities of Xiangyang and Fengcheng were ready to fall. The Mongols' new long-range trebuchets would test the mighty walls of the Song Fortress, and Kublai Khan would not stop the bombardment until he sat on the throne of all China. After years of resisting Kublai Khan's siege, Fan Cheng and Xiangyang still refused to submit to Mongol rule. To take the cities, Kublai Khan would harness the full power of his empire by enlisting an ally from the Ilkhanate of Persia. Ismail, a siege expert, would lead the Mongol army in the construction of the Hui Hui Pao, an immensely powerful counterweight trebuchet. This new trebuchet, once constructed, could hurl boulders greater in size than any weapon before it. During the years-long siege, Kublai Khan had established lucrative trade routes with Chinese market towns who swore loyalty to him. Although these trade partners were vulnerable to Song attacks, they could deliver valuable resources to fund Ismail's efforts. The Mongol commercial network could supply Ismail in stone so long as he had enough traders on the road.
With the counterweight trebuchet constructed, the Mongols could mount their assault on the Twin Cities. As Ismail's trebuchet had a far greater range than those of the Song defenders, the Mongols could attack from a safe distance. With the 
bridge rebuilt, the doors to Fancheng were wide open. Drawn to the bombardment from the trebuchet, the Song soldiers left gaps elsewhere in their defense, which the Mongols could exploit. The Mongols swept into Fancheng, striking down any Song warriors in their path.
Mama Billige.
Ты After years of holding out against the Mongols, the first of the twin cities finally fell to Kublai Khan's army. All that now stood between Kublai Khan and the throne of China was the final stronghold of the Song, the city of Shangyang. Using the immense range of the great trebuchet, Ismail aimed to lay waste to Shangyang's great keep. Ich 
Counterweight trebuchet proved its might, shaking the earth and shattering the spirits of the song. The great keep of Shangyang had fallen. With Shangyang's gate undefended, the Mongols could now repair the connecting bridge to the Song stronghold. With the city in disarray, the Mongols were free to tear down the Imperial Palace. Let's go! 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 Let's go!
Mongol warriors flooded the streets of Shangyang as the Song defenders rose to make a desperate last stand.
Shangyang, the great bastion of the Song dynasty, had fallen. Kublai Khan had finished what his grandfather, Genghis Khan, had started. And now, he could establish his own great dynasty and sit on the throne of all China. The Mongol army smashed through Shangyang's defenses and captured the city. Kublai Khan then pursued the remnants of the Song dynasty across southern China. In 1279, at the Battle of Yamen, the Mongols destroyed the last defenders of the Song. Kublai Khan now ruled over all China, founding the Yuan Dynasty. His royal court in Shangdu welcomed scholars, traders, and religious leaders. The Mongols demonstrated civility and religious tolerance, but also brutality and violence, typifying the contradictions within the Mongol Empire. Since Genghis Khan first united the Mongolian tribes, they had made incredible advances in technology and trade. And they created indelible connections between East and West. At its height, almost a hundred million people lived under Mongol rule, a quarter of the world's population. The Mongol Empire endured for less than 200 years, before fragmenting into smaller territories. But its legend continues to this day. Genghis Khan's mission was to unite the world into one empire. Yet he always returned to the Mongolian steppe where the endless grasslands lay beneath the eternal sky. And from where he created one of the largest empires the world has ever known.